Gotta get in the zone. Mm. La, 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 la. So many takes. For the past seven years, I've been using Adobe Premiere Pro for all my video editing needs. And I haven't really looked uh, in any other direction other than Adobe Premiere Pro until last week. You know, I was like, you know what, let me try something new. Let me, I mean, I've been using the same software and learning it and mastering how to use that one software. Let me try something new. Maybe, maybe, who knows? Maybe there's something that I'm missing, you know, out there in the world. So I was like, you know, what, let me try Final Cut Pro since there are a lot of YouTubers that I follow that use Final Cut Pro as their main editing software. So I was like, you know, let me try it out. And it was it was actually mixed feelings. It was mixed feelings and there are things that I liked, but there are things that I didn't like. I wanna share some of those things in this video just to you know, share my experience of what it was like, what you should watch out for if, you are, if you're also considering the same thing. The first thing that I really liked in Final Cut Pro was speed ramping. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Adobe Premiere Pro needs to get on that bus of whatever Final Cut is doing. It's like the way you speed ramp is really nice and simple and, and, and fun. Like, it's actually cool. I just want to show you, you know, how you can easily speed ramp. So press Command R, which is shortcut for bringing up your speed controls. You can go here and just, you know, maybe say slow it down by 50% and it will slow down the entire clip. But of course, if we are going for a style where we just want to speed ramp a certain part of the video, for me being, let's say, I wanted to slow down just here you know, when she's piping the cake. So you go to that part where you want it to start slowing down and then you click on R, which is shortcut for range selector. And then you just click and you drag that part that you want it to slow down. Uh, for me, it's here. So whilst it's still selected here, you go to this icon, which I don't even know what it's called, but oh, wait, let's see. It's called the retiming tool, I think, or something like that. And then you click on it and you go to, you know, whatever percentage you want it to slow down with. I shot this at 120 frames per second and I can slow it down to about 20%. So I'm just gonna use 25% and then bam, it automatically slows that part down to 25%. And you know, the part before that is still at 100%. The part after that is still at 100%, which is normal speed. So now you see when we play it back, it just slows down there and then it goes back to normal speed, which is really cool. You know, I like it. And I mean, you can play around with these controls, make it even slower. You can see the percentage is changing or, you know, you can click on these arrows. You can make this faster or you can make it slower, whatever you want. I, I, I just think this is a really cool way of speed ramping. I really enjoyed speed ramping in Final Cut. In Premiere Pro, in Premiere Pro, you put your clip. Again, there's more than one way of speed ramping in Premiere Pro as well. Uh, but one of the ways that I really like to use is I just uh, right click on this FX icon and then go to time remapping and then speed. And then I select the part that I wanted to slow down. I could create a keyframe there, command and click, left click and then you scrub to where you want it to pick up again to normal speed, command and left click. And then I'm just gonna zoom in here. And then you just click and drag down this line and then it will be showing you a percentage value there. So I'm just gonna go to 25% like the other one. And now when we play it back, you know, it slows down just that part. And of course you can use this to further smoothen this speed ramp. I mean, I've gotten used to it and I know how to use it, but I just, there's something about the final cut uh, speed ramping process that was just really fun. It was really nice. I mean, I really love to have something like that in Premiere Pro. <laughs> Moving on to the second thing. Second thing is interface. Personally, I might be biased because I really like how Apple um, things look. You know, uh, by the way, Final Cut Pro is only for Apple machines. So you can't use this on Windows or anything like that. So they have um, their own style, you know, just like how the Logic Pro, if you're into music production, 
Uh, this will really look familiar uh, to the Logic Pro. It's really nice. I think I like it. You know, I like how it looks. Everything is marked in a way that's very understandable. And I think if you were starting from scratch and you're just beginning and you had to choose between Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro, I would say Final Cut Pro is gonna be easier for you in terms of the interface and understanding what's what and what is going where and just learning. Premiere Pro is still great. I mean, I don't have anything against it. I love it, I still use it, but I think it's really intimidating if you're starting for the first time because it's got this industrial kind of look where everything is technical. I kind of have to know all the knobs and things and clicks and whatever. Same thing, I mean, with uh, Final Cut, but I think because of how, because it's made uh, for Apple, by Apple. Third thing um, that I want to talk about is the timeline, the magnetic timeline. So there's a lot of debates on YouTube whether you know the mag magnetic timeline is great or if it's not and whatever. Again, I think it's a preference thing. Personally, because I've been using Premiere Pro for so many years, I had to kind of unlearn. I work in Premiere Pro every day, like almost every day of the week, and certain things have become second nature. I expect certain things to happen when I click on something or when I drag or when I zoom in or zoom out. Like I expect certain things to happen. So I had to unlearn that when I was learning how to use Final Cut Pro because with Premiere Pro, if you move one clip that's in the middle of, uh, of your timeline, everything, on the other side, which is the right side, everything on the other side doesn't move, it stays there. But in Final Cut Pro, if you move a clip that's in the middle of your timeline, it just, you know, like a magnet, it just goes and it, it moves, everything on the right moves and it attaches to the rest of the other uh, clips. Which, again, as a preference, maybe that works for you, maybe that doesn't. For me personally, I prefer the Premiere Pro way I like things to stay where I put them, like stay there. I will tell you when to move when I want to. You know, have you ever left things in your room and then someone comes and they just clean up and whatever. And then you're like, I left it here for a reason. You know, I left it there for a reason. So it kind of feels like that, like where Final Cut is just cleaning up for you. Going on to the fourth thing that I want to talk about, which is scheming. I loved this about uh, cut. It was kind of annoying in the beginning because it was automatically on and I didn't know what was happening. I, I just thought that was a default setting. But after looking through things, I then realized, oh, there's a button to switch this on and off. So you can either go on this, uh, you know, turn video and audio scheming on and off or shortcut for that is S. So when it's off, you know, it just works like it would in, in Premiere Pro where if I'm hovering on top of the timeline, you know, nothing is happening on this window. But if I turn it on by pressing S or clicking on that icon, when I hover around the, the, the timeline, it's moving on the monitor window, which is cool, you know, because I think if you have a really big project, you can just click on S, you know, and just you know, move around, checking whatever you want to check. I don't know what and then click S again just to turn it off. So the next thing that I want to talk about is workflow. This is where I'm not talking about the downside of Final Cut Pro and most probably why I will not use Final Cut Pro or move to Final Cut Pro at all. It's to do with my workflow. So I don't just work in Premiere Pro. I use After Effects, I use Photoshop, I use Illustrator, uh, I use other Adobe software, InDesign, Lightroom, uh, Adobe Audition. So I, I have a lot of um, Adobe software that I use and because Adobe makes all of them, they work seamlessly together and they just blend in together. You can just work through Premiere Pro into After Effects, through Premiere Pro into Adobe Audition and you can work on them together and not have any issues, you know, just seamless integration. So now the problem with Final Cut Pro is I'm not always going to use Final Cut Pro only. I am going to, I don't want a case where I work on a project in Final Cut Pro and then I have to give it to someone to finish it off in Premiere Pro. And then I start to have issues with exporting it for them because I mean, there's a way, there's a way to do it, but it can be tedious and it can be 
frustrating, which is what I ran into. So I was done with everything, cutting my clips, putting on the timeline and, uh, you know, speed ramping, putting the audio and all those things. And then when it came to color grading, I had a bit of some issues and there's some things that I just didn't understand, I uh, suppose, lack of knowledge and ignorance about Final Cut Pro. I was like, you know what, I've been working on this project for five days in Final Cut Pro and I'm tired. I am tired. I would have done this in a day in Premiere Pro. So let me just export this to Premiere Pro and finish it because I'm tired, I, I don't want any more. And then came problems. So Premiere Pro can read uh, files that are called XML files. So you can export a project from another program, let's say DaVinci Resolve, you can export a, an XML file, which can be read by Premiere Pro. So you can export your timeline and then it's gonna read everything and then you can continue your project in another program. So Final Cut also has that option to export an XML file, but, because it's Apple and they want to be different. They have their own XML file, which is which Premiere Pro can't read. So, but DaVinci Resolve can. Your only option is to either export that XML file and buy a software for about 50 bucks that can convert that XML file to one that Premiere Pro can read, or you export a Final Cut XML file and then you download a, a free version of DaVinci Resolve and then you can export an XML file that is readable in Premiere Pro from there. So if everything works well, it should be honestly a really simple process, take you about three minutes or so. But if it doesn't, oh, you, you, yeah. I spent like four or five hours trying to figure out what was wrong. I don't know what some information was being lost along the way. And I think it has to do with my footage because it didn't have unique names, you know, my Sony records C001, C002 and whatever. When the project was going into Premiere Pro, Premiere Pro was treating it as a sequence of the same thing. So it wasn't reading the different clips as different. It was just using one clip and treating it as a sequence of some sort. I know it's confusing, but that's because it was. It was confusing. I was like, how how can a clip that's written C005 be showing C001 footage? You know, it, it was confusing. That really frustrated me because that just showed me that I won't be able to use Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro at the same time. If I'm gonna move to Final Cut Pro, then I need to like literally forget about Adobe Premiere Pro I need to just forget about it because I'm, I'm not going to be able to integrate like and, and be able to export my projects between the two software. But maybe there's something that I did wrong. You know, if you are a Final Cut Pro user and you know how to where I went wrong, please let me know. Ignorance, ignorance, really. I am not going to say I did it all, but I tried. But that's when I realized that Final Cut is great, but uh, it's not great for me. I think if you are really invested in the Adobe ecosystem, yeah, just stick to Adobe and just just love it, man. Just love it. it. Personally, the other thing that I realized when I was trying out Final Cut Pro uh, the last week is I've invested so much the last seven years, uh, seven plus years of just learning the software and improving and perfecting certain things, perfecting certain skills, you know, making my own keyboard shortcuts and making all these certain commands and you know, making my customized panels and all these things. And with all the new plugins that come with all the new updates, you end up specializing in that one particular software. Whereas if I was to start with Final Cut now, I feel like I'm starting from zero. Part of going into Final Cut was also to just find out if there's anything I'm missing that, you know, maybe that Final Cut is giving me. And honestly, I think, I think I, I'm not missing out anything. At the end of the day, it's about the quality of the product that you are giving. Uh, your viewers. So it doesn't really matter whether you're using Final Cut or Premiere Pro. What matters is how good are you at using what you use? That feels like a quote. As a Premiere Pro user using Final Cut for the first time, what do I think about it? What, how do I feel? And I'm not moving. Adobe is home. I think the deal breaker for me is the workflow. It's, it's definitely the workflow. I work way way better with the Adobe 
ecosystem. I don't think I would survive in Final Cut Pro purely because of the kind the nature of the videos that I, I deal with. I do a lot of motion design and a lot of things in After Effects that I then want to use in, in, in Premiere Pro, sometimes, you know, in Photoshop, sometimes in Audition. And I feel like Premiere Pro is packed with so much that it offers you all that, you know, power to really expand your video editing. But I'm not bashing Final Cut Pro because look, there, there are people who are making crazy stuff with Final Cut Pro and kudos to them. My advice to you is if you're starting out for the first time and something like interface is like a deal breaker for you it's like what you really want then consider Final Cut Pro it's, it's it's actually nice it's easy it's everything is labeled very well for you to know what is what but if you're really looking at moving in an in industrial type of software where you're you're gonna work with other teams or you're gonna join it in an agency or you're gonna join a production team the likelihood is they're gonna use premiere pro you want to invest yourself in that software that will make it easier for you to work with teams but let me know what you use in the comments down below let me know what you like about the software that you use are you a final cut pro user or are you a premiere pro user what do you like what do you hate Let's have a conversation in the comments down below. And if you're here for the first time, my name is Z and I do tips and tutorials on how I shoot my videos from the gear that I use to the software that I use. So if that's your kind of thing, please do consider subscribing. And until next time. Yeah.